Greetings, this is Bobby W6IWN. Today we're here to talk about the TID H3 firmware upgrade that came out. Looks like it says April 27th, 2024. Uh, let's talk about the main features right away. So everybody's been annoyed by the tail squelch. Apparently this does finally rectify that. We're gonna have to figure it out and see if it works. One thing I'm really interested in, it says it expands the frequencies to 18 megahertz. I can't find the, the notes on the firmware upgrade anywhere right now. I, I emailed Ted, hopefully they'll send those. So if anyone knows for sure, uh, please post below. But uh, that would also include 10 through 12 meters and CB radio receive on the AM. So I'm gonna test that out. I did order a telescopic 52 inch uh, CB antenna and a SMA adapter to make it work with this radius. Fingers crossed, uh, we'll see. Uh, that antenna should work for 10 and 12 meters too for demonstration purposes. So let's uh, dive right in and uh, show you where to get the firmware, how to upload the firmware, but first I'm gonna go ahead and post a warning. I'm not positive, but you might be able to brick your radio. I'm not sure if this affects the bootloader. If someone knows, uh, please comment below. But be very careful. Use this at your own risk. If you do fail and something happens to your radio, please don't email me and tell me, you know, why my radio is ruined. Do this at your own risk. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to walkietalkiesoftware.com. I'm going to post all the links below in the description. Uh, you want to click up here on the download programming software. It's a zip file, so you might want to make a folder or something on your desktop to unzip it to or get easily to find it. It's up to you. Uh, once it's unzipped, you'll find these contents. You want to go up to the top one here. It's called Firmware Upgrade. Open that folder. And then I highly suggest you read the README first, and it's going to give you all the instructions. Uh, and that's going to tell you you want to first uh, install the TDH3 IAP setup. So go ahead and run that. Uh, once you have that ran, it's going to look like this right here. This is the program installed. Um, it says to use a Kenwood connection. This thing does have USB for programming on the side. I don't know if that will work, but I'm not going to risk it. It says to use the Kenwood. Uh, so it's actually, it says to press and hold firmly while you do it, which is kind of sketchy to me, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, bear in mind, this is my first attempt. I have not done this. So it says to open the file, my desktop. Firmware upgrade, and it's gonna be this bin file here. All right, open the file. It says to click start on the program. Leave your radio off. Make sure your radio is turned off. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is click start. After you click start, you wanna hold the PTT and turn on your radio. So hold the push, the top, push to talk and turn on your radio. Fingers crossed this works and doesn't damage my radio. <laughs> oh, you might wanna set your COM port first. That's also very important. Okay, looks like mine's on COM5. Okay, let's try that again. Start. Okay, holding PTT, turning radio on. Oh, status, downloading. Oh, okay. It's working my first try. I've seen other people who's had issues with this. I don't know if it was their cable or not, or I'm just lucky. Well, we're not done yet. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So it doesn't look like it takes a super long time. So let's go ahead and jump to when this is done and see how it worked out. Okay, download successful. Uh, I noticed the radio rebooted. I've seen uh, two of them so far taken. Okay, let's turn this down. Let's go to menu 40, which is the squelch tail. Okay, I have it set all the way to off. Uh, it's kind of nice. There's actually a net that's going on. Moving north. Let's see if we can... Uh, Appreciate that. We can hear if there's a squelch tail. Okay. Let's test this out. Oh, I still heard a little squelch tail there. It wasn't like before, but we'll do some more further testing on that. Okay, let's try the, the squelch tail on the local repeater here. W6IWN testing. Hey! I didn't hear it that time. 
I didn't hear it. So I think they did finally rectify that. You tell me your results, please post below in the comments. All right, here's the haps. It does receive 17 meters all the way down to 18 megahertz now. Uh, it does get 10 and 12 and CB. However, it's locked to FM. So I'm trying to see if I can get some FM CB traffic just to demonstrate, but I don't know how many people do that. Uh, also, I guess you could listen to FM repeaters. So I tried to program it in here to maybe see if there was a workaround. I couldn't get that to work. I went into Chirp. I tried to somehow program it there. Uh, it's locked out of Chirp. I went into the actual TID radio programming software. It will not let me program it and change anything to AM. So TID radio, if you're watching, that'd be rad since you open these frequencies if we could listen on some, uh, some AM down there. Uh, so, yes, the frequencies have been expanded. Now it will do 17 meter receive FM, uh, 10, 11, 12, 6 meters, um, AM airband. So, yeah, this thing will listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, I hope the firmware upgrade helps you if you choose to do it, and it does uh, rectify the squelch tail. I'm still waiting on that antenna I talked about, so I'm going to do some more research, see if I can't figure out how to get it on AM, uh, down in those bands and do some demos. If not, uh, hopefully we can do something about it in the future. Okay, unfortunately Amazon came and they didn't bring my antenna. So I've been trying to do some demos. I'm using a tri-band antenna. This is an ideal. Uh, I did finally get it to work and receive on uh, 18 megahertz. What I'm using is my Zygu G90 on narrow FM with a dummy load uh, sitting next to the radio and it does work. I don't know why you'd want to use narrow FM on 18 megahertz to receive that, but uh, let's prove that it does work. Okay, let's test out 17 meters narrow FM. W6IWN testing, 17 meters narrow FM received on the TID Radio TDH3. So yeah, it works. Uh, this isn't the best setup to test it. Okay, let's test out 10 meters. Narrow FM, 28.420. W6IWN testing, 10 meters. Narrow FM. Let's show you, it does receive the CB band. However, I do not have a way to demonstrate that for you and I'm not picking up any FM CB traffic. So what happens if you try to transmit on the 11 meter CB band? I already tested this on a dummy load before I'm gonna try it over the air, but just to demonstrate. Cancel, cancel. 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 It will not let you transmit there. So don't even try. Conclusion. So the firmware did uh, fix the tail squelch, at least from my experience. It, yes, it will receive it down to 18 megahertz narrow FM. I'm kind of disappointed. It doesn't do AM on there. Uh, I would be interested in possibly monitoring channel 19 sometimes. If I had the ability, why not? Uh, so TID Radio, if you're listening, make that happen, please. Um, I don't know what you would use these applications for. Maybe a 10 meter repeater, you can't transmit there, but to receive, I haven't received any. There is none in my area, so I cannot demonstrate that. Uh, if you have any ideas of what this would be useful from 18 megahertz up, um, let me know. And it also does receive six meters, so 50 megahertz as well. So if you wanted to monitor those, I uh, only got it to work in narrow FM. That has been my experience. If you've had anything else, please share. Thanks for watching.